This is where my life in Japan started. It was the prefecture that first took me in and gave me a foundation, and so it's really quite special to me. It's one of my favorite places to spend time in in Japan outside of Tokyo, and yeah, I'm biased, but overall, I think it's a bit overlooked and underrated. My wife has never been here to Fukuoka before, so I was looking forward to visiting my Japan hometown together. Fukuoka Prefecture is on Kyushu Island in southern Japan. Fukuoka City is the capital, and Hakata is one of the main downtowns. If you've heard of Hakata Ramen before, or chains like Ichiran or Ipuro, this is where it's from. So naturally, the first stop, ramen. Now, there's an infinite number of good ramen spots here, and it was a staple in my diet when I lived here. But Shinshin is one of those mega famous local spots that you can't really get anywhere else. The walls are full of signatures from some of the most famous celebrities in Japan who've stopped by. And the ramen? Fantastic. Are you excited? After we had our fill, we caught the train down to the Zaifu to visit the Zaifu Tenmangu Shrine. Right when you get off at the station, you already get that Japanese shrine vibe. Even the mailboxes are different. For this shrine, ume or plum blossoms are significant, so there are a lot of these symbols around. The main street leading up to the shrine is lined with Japanese shops as well, and one of the most popular items is umegai mochi, a rice cake with azuki filling. Hot. It's good. Yeah. And one of Japan's cool Starbucks locations is here too. This small location was designed by Kengo Kuma, and it really stands out. The shrine grounds are quite scenic. It's one of the most popular destinations in Fukuoka to go to, so luckily we caught it on a quiet day. The shrine is related to education, and it's said that rubbing the ox's head is supposed to help you get smarter. You feel smarter? <laughs> well, we'll see. And so a lot of students will come here to pray in hopes that they'll pass their entrance exams and be accepted to their school of choice. For dinner, we went to a local izakaya in Hakata. Some of the local cuisine might not be for beginner level Japanese food lovers, and it took me a while to get used to it as well. But now that I'm used to it, and again, I admit that I might be a little biased, but I seriously think that Fukuoka cuisine as a whole is one of, if not the best, of any prefecture in Japan. And that's my official stance. Goma Saba, which is completely raw macro sashimi in sesame sauce, is something that you can't get in Tokyo because the fish needs to be extremely fresh. And this one still makes me feel a bit bad, but fresh ika or squid? It just tastes better when it's clear and fresh rather than when it turns white and kind of rubbery. And they'll turn the remaining meat into tempura after. Basashi or horse sashimi, it's actually from neighboring Kumamoto prefecture, but it's a staple in Fukuoka as well, and it's really good. And Motsunabe hot pot. Love it. We had to walk all of that off, so we took a stroll through Canal City, a shopping mall along the river in the nearby Nakasu area. They have cool water shows here. Fukuoka also has a lot of yatai, which is a local culture. They're casual food stalls that pop up in the evenings, and you can just hop in and have a seat. Oh, by the way, the area that a lot of these are in is Nakasu, and it's kind of a red light district at night. It's actually really nice though, and has a vibrant atmosphere with people out and about and having fun. It does get a little weird at times though. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So we stopped at one of the yatai, and it's really impressive to see just how much good food they can cook in this small stall. 
Just so good, even after being full off with dinner. Perfect way to end our first day. We started the next day on the water. Yanagawa city has a bunch of these canals and you can ride a boat through them. They used to be part of a moat for a castle a few hundred years ago. Yanagawa is in southern Fukuoka and is closer to Kumamoto and Saga prefectures than central Fukuoka so apparently the local dialect is a bit different. This is the same with the actual city that I lived in which we'll visit a little later. <laughs> and for lunch, a local specialty, unagi. It was my first time having it here and I was surprised that it's different from the usual way of eating it. Unagi in Yanagawa is cooked by steaming the eel and rice together in a wooden box so all of that flavor is just packed on in there. Then we headed back to my favorite place in Fukuoka city, Tenjin. I used to come here a lot while living in Fukuoka. It's one of the main areas in the city, arguably more so than the Hakata station area. It's where most of the shopping is. It's got a few major department stores, boutiques, brand shops, there's a lot of food spots, clubs and bars, and a ton of coffee shops. Manu Coffee is one of the OGs in the area and it's kind of got this urban bohemian type of vibe to it. Really chill. And more great Fukuoka food for dinner. Awesome. We went to eat with family friends that I met while I was living here. We had more goma saba which I think I could eat every day because it's just so good. Daikon tempura and this was my first time eating it and it was quite addicting. Yakitori and mizutaki which is another local style of hot pot that uses free range chicken. A good time and everything was just really delicious. I'd probably get really fat if I lived here again. And seeing Tenjin at night like this, lots of memories. Coffee and toast for breakfast. And then we began making our way to the actual area I lived in. But first, a stop at another destination area, Mojiko. Mojiko is a retro area that used to be an international trade port in the late 1800s. It's a nice waterfront and a lot of the old buildings are still around. There's events and festivals here and old school storytellers where you kind of buy a candy and sit down and listen to them talk. And if you look up, you can see the main Honshu Island right there. It's really close. So I used to live in a small city called Yukuhashi. There is about 70,000 people in the city and I lived in a building right on the riverside which was great because I had amazing views of sunsets and cherry blossoms in the spring. I began my life here teaching English based at the board of education in this city hall right here and teaching at junior high schools like this one. There's not a whole lot here to be completely honest. It's just a typical small city in Japan. But there is a small ramen shop that ended up expanding around Asia and Europe and got really popular, Kanadaya. Kanadaya is actually just a typical local neighborhood favorite. And it's a lot, lot, lot less fancy than the international locations because this is how ramen is in Japan. They serve a hearty bowl of rich tonkotsu broth and it's probably the most famous eatery here. Look at that sashimi platter. Damn. We met up with a couple of my local friends and had more delicious food at one of my favorite izakayas, chachamaru. And marketing? It's funny to hear their stories because it's way more lax here when it comes to drinking. They were reminiscing about going out to bars and restaurants and getting totally wasted while in high school. Oh. 
いざうちの居酒屋に入れもう焼き鳥屋ねあその時は入れたよ一番広い座敷ああ広い座敷で20人とか30人ぐらいでもう飲み会で ID 確認しされてないないないないない,<笑>ない前,前はないよ<笑>ない高校の先生が普通に、うんお前ら頑張ったら居酒屋連れてやるよって言ってえその時先生と一緒に先生と居酒屋行って<笑>俺は違うけど<笑>俺は先生も連れてきてた生徒たちだけだけど本当にそうはねその時は全然あなんか飲んで<笑>でもうそこでもうみたいな飲みすぎてみんなに運ばれるみたいなまあ、それも勉強だったもんね,<笑>俺,、まあ、ね俺ら先生ありだったからね<笑>合宿バレーボールの合宿学校であった時も教室で泊まって、うん、教室の後ろ全部お酒並んでる<笑><笑> 3日間ぐらいでもガンガン増えてる<笑><笑>先生来るけど何も言わないし、えー、This was a while ago obviously but still right? So in Japan, there's this thing called shime, which is like the last late night meal after a night out. Here, it's usually tonkotsu ramen. I like their style. We topped everything off with my favorite ramen in the area, madushi. It was so good to be back, and there's probably so many stories from here that I could tell. My Japan hometown. Thanks for the memories and helping me get accustomed to Japan. Hope to see you again soon.